Welcome to our first live recording of Faith Works Church Calandra. Last Sunday we were still meeting at the community center, but as you are aware of, that is now closed, so we can't even meet there or do even a recording there. So this will be filmed from our laptop in our office at home. So be patient with me. I have never done this before. I've always speaking, uh, spoken to a live audience, uh, so which makes it far more animated and anointed. But I want to bring you an anointed message and encourage you in the faith. So all those who are watching today on Sunday morning on the 29th of March 2020, um, we are going to be encouraged in our faith. And we're going to stand strong. So before I get into the message, um, I just want to pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can be together even if it is online. And I pray, Father God, that you will speak to our hearts, encourage us in our faith, and strengthen us, Lord, according to your will. I pray, Father God, these words will be anointed. Strengthen us, Lord Jesus, and guide us today and in these uh, trying times. I pray, Father God, we will walk in faith and not in fear. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Remember that fear and faith are opposites. They are oxymorons. We need to walk in faith. We read so much negativity in the media, and those things are happening, and we can't escape them. Um, but as God's people, we want to walk in faith. I believe this is the day for the church to shine. I don't know if you've noticed, but I find in different circumstances, in work, and people we meet, they are more open to talk about the gospel than ever or hear about it. So may I encourage us to share the gospel in a season and out of season. I believe we're in season to share because the harvest is great, yeah, but the workers are few. The harvest is plentiful. So let us do our task of sharing the gospel because this is the time for the church to shine. Remember too the land of Goshen, that's the place where the Israelites stayed when they were captive in Egypt, is that the, um, the first plagues came there also, but then when the plague of flies came and the plague of darkness, it did not come into the land of Goshen where the Israelites lived. So I also believe we are not necessarily immune to a virus, but I believe the Lord will protect us if we are wise and vigilant and are faithful to the Lord. So anyway, the message this morning is about the last days, and the last days will be like the days of Noah. So I will start with reading uh, just a few brief scriptures as an introduction. And I just want to then continue for maybe 10-15 minutes um, to encourage you to stand strong in our faith. I'm reading, the first scripture I'm reading from is from Matthew 24, 37. Very brief. As it was in the days of Noah, <clears throat> so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. And then also in Matthew 24, verse 39. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came. And took them all away. This is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. And this is all in the context in Matthew 24. Now, Matthew 24 is not an easy chapter to teach on, and it could take hours, and it's very much connected to the book of Revelation and the book of Daniel. But first of all, I want to present to you that please don't get mixed up the rapture with the second coming. The rapture is clearly an event for the church where we will meet the, ch the Lord halfway, in the air, and then we will see Him as He is. Now, the reason I'm preaching on this is also because of the context of the times we live in. Now, I know there will be plenty of people saying, oh, you know, we've heard that for so many years. You know, um, don't use it as an excuse, because it is relevant for today, even more relevant than ever before. I remember hearing about this as a young Christian, probably more than 30 years ago, but what is 30 years in our lifetime, or even in the background of 3,000 years church history? Yeah? The one thing that is very different today is since 1948, the state of Israel is, and the, the, is declared, and the Jewish people at large are back in this little country on the Mediterranean Sea. And that is a significant fulfillment of the prophecy that I believe the rapture can happen any time. So... Is this message to frighten us? No. This message is really to give us not fear of man, but fear of the Lord, and that we are ready. So, back to Noah. It's the Lord Jesus himself who compares the days we live in today. Let us agree together that we truly live in the last days. We don't know when the Lord is coming back. 
could be tomorrow, it could be 10 years. But in regards to the virus, we see things that are being sped up, that maybe we will have to take, people are being forced to take a chip, and uh, we are not going to take this. It's getting too close to the mark of the beast. So, is this to give us fear? No, it's to prepare us. Some people will say, oh, you know, those who believe in the rapture are going to sit with their arms crossed in a chair waiting for the Lord comes. No, I feel an urgency to share even more when I believe that that day is approaching. And as I said before, there is a clear difference between the rapture and the second coming. The second coming, he will come back to the nation of Israel and he will set his feet on the Mount of Olives. And all eyes will see him and the Jewish people will repent. The rapture will come as a thief in the night. You know he is coming, but it's still like a thief in the night. Even Christians will be surprised. Remember the parable of the, the ten virgins? Uh, they were all virgins. They were all believers. And five were taken by total surprise, but also the other five were taken by surprise who had enough oil because they were all asleep. So he will truly come like a thief in the night. But we will meet him halfway in the year. He will take us to the place he has prepared for us. And we will serve, serve him forever. We will actually reign and rule with him. So is it to be fearful? No, not at all. It is something to look forward to. Anyway, back to Noah. Noah, he preached for 120 years. That shows you how graceful and merciful God is. Because it does say it was a wicked and deprived generation at that time. And I think we are back to these days. That everything which was normal and what the norm has been taken away from us from society. Including abortion, uh, mar uh, marriage, the changes of marriage laws, etc. Et now, we can't necessarily change that. But what we can do is keep preaching Jesus. Keep preaching the gospel and remain faithful. Yeah? So Noah preached for 120 years. Noah was referred to as a righteous man who preached faithfully and uh, he warned against coming judgment. So we as Christians as well, of course, need to give people hope and a future because that's what the Lord wants to give to us. But at the same time, we need to also give warnings to believers and to unbelievers that judgment will come. Like I said, it's not a message of doom and gloom, which often is interpreted as that. It's not at all. But there is an urgency. And so may I encourage us, church, uh, friends, family, for all those who are listening, this is the time, even more so than ever before, to preach the gospel, to share with people. Yeah. So Noah saved eight people in all. So it was not that he was a very successful preacher, according to today's standards, but he was a preacher of righteousness, and there's a lot of similarities to today. So the other similarity is that many people continued their own thing. Also, he got mocked and laughed at. The other thing that is, uh, the people didn't understand is what he was building. And I want to compare the ark to the local church. Yeah, He was building an ark for 120 years and uh, just nailing away and hammering away and, and uh, cutting with a handsaw, of course. Didn't have all these tools that he had today. So it took a long time. And his sons were helping. His whole family was helping. And the people did not understand what he was building. First of all, because they had never seen rain and water came up out of the earth. So it's very similar today. If you try to explain people about things of God, if they're not born again, they don't understand what we were building. They don't understand the local church. They don't understand necessarily what we're doing. But I believe through the Holy Spirit and through preaching, we can save more than eight people because it's still the age of grace, the age of mercy, people can still come to him so he was building and building and then finally the rain came and judgment came the interesting thing is did Noah close the door no God closed the door of the ark supernaturally so I want to warn us also as believers this is the time to stop playing church it's not necessarily about what when we get from the church but what we can give, uh, what we, we can give to the church, yeah. It's not what we can get. It's all about serving the Lord and building the church together, building local church together, where people can come and are saved and receive salvation and receive help and receive uh, healing and and blessing. So God closed the door of the ark. Now I also want to take us straight to the parables that come after. Uh, chapter 24 
and that's also the parable of the ten virgins and the parable of the talents. So it's all talking about us being ready. And also the, the five virgins, the foolish virgins, they were not ready. And when they stood before the Lord, the Lord was telling them, I never knew you, even though they were virgins. So let us be uh, a warning to us. Yeah, so remember those three parables, the ten virgins, the talents, and the sheep and goat. So we need to be prepared. Yeah, do you have the oil of the Holy Spirit? Are you ready to stand before the Lord? Are you ready to receive him? But are you also willing to give out? I'm just reading another scripture from the same uh, chapter, Matthew 24, verse 45. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? Yeah? This is not only talking to pastors, but it's also talking to all believers. Are you willing to share? Do you have food to give out? Not just physical food, but spiritual food to help people in a time of need. This is the excellent opportunity if your neighbors are in a need or other church members are in a need to, of course, help them with food as well as stocks are running low in the supermarket. But who then is the faithful and wise servant to give out spiritual food? These are the times to sow seeds. These are exciting times. I believe that the rapture is coming near. So don't let us be mockers who say, where is this coming? My grandmother told me about this. I've heard it for so many years. Listen, our lifetime is so short compared to eternity and church history. 2,000 years church history. I believe the Lord's coming. This, um, the rapture can be so close. So there's m even more urgency to share. So are you a faithful and wise servant to, to share and to give out? Let us continue reading. In Matthew 25, verse 1, it says, At that time, the king kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Yeah? Are you ready to meet the bridegroom? Do you have enough oil in your lamp? Do you feel lately that maybe you've been struggling in your faith? You haven't been overcoming? The Lord has the answer. He has the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, which stands for the oil. Yeah? Serve him every day. Read his word and pray even more. Because you want to be a wise virgin, don't you? You want to be prepared for his coming. You don't want to be taken by surprise. Yeah? Now the scripture I want to continue reading with us is Matthew 25, 14. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. Yeah? So we see here in this parable that... There is an there's faithful servants and an unfaithful servant. I'm just sharing it in a nutshell. But the unfaithful servant who didn't do anything with his talents, which can also refer to money, which can refer to our time, which can refer to our gifting, I believe all of the above, he wasn't using it wisely and was burying it in the ground. And he got rebuked and he was not he could not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Yeah? Another scripture here, Matthew twenty five, verse thirty two. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Yeah? In the Old Testament time, in the time of Jesus, sheep and goat looked very similar. Through crossbreeding, they look a lot different now, but they looked very similar. The only difference is they behave different, and, they, and goats eat everything. But sheep will follow the shepherd. Even though the goats might look very similar, the goats were not willing to pay the price. They were not willing to go the whole way. That's why it's so important today. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to turn to Him. Today is the day to serve Him and not to give up and not to panic. Do not give in to fear. As the last message was last Sunday, there is a scripture for every day of the year. Fear not, fear not but walk in the fear of the Lord. I believe the time is coming near that the Antichrist could set himself up. This is not fear-mongering. This is just warning us to read the Scriptures and study the Scriptures for yourself. Read, for example, in Revelation chapter 13. 
we see the dragon, which stands for the devil himself. We see the beast out of the sea, which stands for the Antichrist. And we see the beast out of the earth, which stands for the false prophet. Now, I believe times are being prepared and being sped up. And this is all connection with uh, the days of Noah. Do we see what's happening? Are you helping to build the ark? Are you already in the ark? Because God will close the door at a certain time. It does say, when the number of Gentiles is fulfilled, then the end will come. Yeah, We don't know. We, the gospel has been preached to a lot of nations, and we don't know the exact date. Even the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, said, only the Father knows. But we do know the season we're living in. How exciting this is. The rapture is the blessed hope. It is that we see the day approaching. Rejoice. And I fully understand, also especially for young people saying, hey, I still want to get married. I have so many plans and we don't know. As Martin Luther, the, the famous church reformer said, if I knew that the earth would end tomorrow, I would plant a tree today. Yeah. So it's not that we panic or say, hey, um, I'm just sitting with my arms crossed and not doing anything. No, if, if you want to buy a house, if you have great plans, continue day by day. Don't give up. Don't. Uh, do as the Thessalonian church did, and, and the Apostle Paul gave them a warning saying, some of you are not working, some of you are not doing anything, because you have a fatalistic mentality, um, you're not the Son of the Lord could come back any time, so I'm not doing anything. No, that's the wrong attitude. But, this is also a message to compare the days of Noah with the days we live in today, that many Christians, especially young Christians, are not aware of the mark of the beast that will come at a certain time. And that a certain leader, which I personally believe, this is my personal opinion, um, based on the scriptures, as far as I have a revelation now, that it will be a European leader, the Antichrist, coming from the restored Roman Empire. Um, he will set himself up as a world ruler. Uh, the European Union is still a powerhouse. He probably will also have influence in the United Nations. And uh, then also there will be the beast out of the earth, which I think, based on the revelation I have till so far, will be... Uh, a man of Jewish descent, because the Jews will also follow the, and worship the Antichrist. And as we can read in the book of Daniel, he will set himself up in the temple. So the Jews will follow him. And Gentiles and Jews, they will see the Antichrist as a hero. Yeah, we already see signs that they're talking about uh, taking cash away and making it a special society. And uh, it could very well be that the measurements that governments have they put in place now to protect us against the virus, that it could cause an economic collapse. I hope it doesn't. I pray it doesn't. Um, but um, it could happen, and that suddenly a man, a world leader, stands up and says, hey, I have the solution. We have one world government, one world currency, and solves all the problems of trade and financial problems people have. Could very well be true. I sincerely hope that it's not going to happen yet. Uh, I have great plans for the future myself and want to do a lot of things still here on the planet Earth. But at the same time, uh, we need to be ready. So remember, the last days will be like the days of Noah. Don't be like the people who mocked Noah, who laughed at Noah, who didn't understand the ark he was building. And uh, he wanted not just to incorporate all the animals, one of every kind, male and female, but he wanted to, uh, the ark was very spacious. He wanted to incorporate as many people as possible, for it is God's will for that none shall be lost, that, but that all come to the knowledge of the truth. And it's still God's will today as well. You can come to the knowledge of the truth. If you are a Christian today that um, have not committed their lives fully to Him, you need to not only believe in Him, but also make Him Lord of your life. Also, um, turn to Him wholeheartedly and repent of maybe things that you know deep down in your heart are wrong. Yeah? It's not the question, we shouldn't ask the question, how far can I go with my lifestyle and still be safe? We should really ask the question, how much can I please my Lord and Savior? It's not like, uh, can I be a Christian and still drink a certain amount of alcohol? Can I be a Christian and have this? Can I be a Christian and do this? No, the question is, we should ask ourselves, especially in these days, how much can I serve him? How much can I please my master? And we do not want to hear, um, I never knew you. But what we do want to hear, well done, uh, good and faithful servant. Let's remember in the parable of the talents, 
There was one with two talents and one with five talents, and both got the same rewards. It's not that we are awarded to um, how many talents we have, it's just how we use them. And talents could be time, money, finances, um, our prayer life, everything. How do we use our gift and how do we use our life to the full? So, are you ready? And don't give in to uh, the skepticism or, or mocking that uh, oh, this, this has been preached so long. I remember reading books from Hal Lindsey 30, 35 years ago. But those people like uh, Tim LaHaye and, and uh, Hal Lindsey would be rejoicing today. I think they're still alive today. And we see the day approaching. So, this is the day for the church to shine. Remember, in the land of Goshen, where the Israelites lived, there was no darkness. Even though there was darkness uh, over the land of Egypt, the Lord had his light shine on his people. Allow the Lord to have his light shine on you. You know what also happens when the light of the Lord shines on you, means also that he exposes things in our life. We may need to change, and we all uh, need to change things and improve things. But praise God for his mercy and his Holy Spirit, that he will guide us in all truth. Yeah? If we seek him with all our heart, we will find him. What an awesome days we live in. May I encourage us to read Daniel in the book of Revelation again. And as I said before, that it, the, the false prophet in, in the book of Revelation chapter 13, he will cause all people, uh, young and old, uh, great and small, um, he will cause all of them to worship the beast. And uh, he will also enforce everybody to have the mark of the beast. So we can see how things are being sped up. So let us be alert. Let us be awake as the scriptures, and especially New Testament, exhort us to be alert on the things that are happening today and uh, serve the Lord with all our heart. Faith works calendar. This is, even though we can't meet physically um, as a whole group, um, this is the day for us to shine and to overcome. Let us pray for the government. Um, uh, there's a lot of pressures on the government and our prime minister. It is not a job to be envied. So let us pray for him that he will make wise decisions and for the Australian government. And there's, those are not easy decisions and that God's will be done. As it, and also remember, don't stop praying for other issues as well. Continue praying for the nation of Israel, which is our prophetic uh, timetable. So continue praying for the nation of Israel. Continue praying for persecuted Christians and other needs. Because there's so much focus on one thing that, for example, in New Zealand, another abortion law got passed because everybody was focused on the virus. So also be aware for other things still going on in people's lives. And I also want to say that you can contact us through our Facebook page or our, our email address or our Harvest Ministries website. Uh, FaithWorks website is combined in one website. You can contact us through these things three things if you don't have a phone number and ask prayer requests. We are still there for you as pastors and friends. We also have friends overseas who are not necessarily part of our church. It's not so much who is part of our church physically, but we love the whole body of Christ. So if there's any need, <coughs> we can help you. We can minister. We can still pray for you. See, the church isn't closed. The building is closed. But the church is our people. And the Holy Spirit dwells in them. And that's our temple. The temple of the Holy Spirit can never be closed. But I do pray that this will be lifted soon and that we can uh, meet again soon in our building and bring a community center. But if not, we just keep doing it live. Oops, there was a little computer glitch. I apologize for that. The screen went dark. So I quickly recovered. So anyway, let us close in prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can still meet online. And I pray, Father God, that this message, we will take this to heart and serve you with all our heart, with all our strength, with all our soul, with all our mind, with everything that's in us. And I pray, Father God, that you comfort those who need comfort, that you help those who walk in fear, not to walk in fear of man, but in the fear of the Lord. Because faith conquers all, love conquers all. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. And I pray we will all stand strong and that we will make you Lord of our lives. Not just believers in you, but that we um, 
Make you Lord over every aspect in our lives. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen.